So DeAndre Jordan all of a sudden gets cast into this light of being this big time center because DJ had lost a lot of weight and coaches were playing around with his minutes. And now he was in a role that was big. So the one thing DJ started working on in practice with Chris Paul and Chauncey Billups were in transitions, run to set the screen and just slip and run because there's no help. So if you get behind the defense, it's a wrap. It's a so <laughs> as soon as the guard, as soon as the guard turn his feet or the big turn his feet, DJ in transition will go to run it for Chris. He take a plant step and he was sprinting to the rim. Six, six, ten, six, eleven, two hundred seventy-five pounds with bounce. Forty oh. hurt. <laughs> so he does it. He does it against Detroit. He plants. He steps, and he's in his full gape and run. Brandon Knight's on the weak side because his transition they can't set up. Brandon Knight's outside the box early. When DJ caught the ball and hit Brandon Knight, he was up so high that he he destroyed Brandon. Brandon's only about 185 pounds, and he hit him, and boom! He When he hit him, Brandon Knight hit the floor like a stack of potatoes, bro. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know what to do. If you watch the clip, I'm in the clip. I run like I'm about to run onto the court, and I stopped, and I started grabbing my head like this because I didn't know what I just saw. And he hit the floor. DJ walks out. And, like, DJ, we're kind of in the spirit of the game. It was like a close game. Yeah, it was. And DJ, does the, he does the dunk face. <laughs> Brandon, Knight, Brandon Knight is laying on the floor hurt. And the ball hit him in the face, too. That's what makes it so bad. Brandon Knight, they had to call a timeout. And, the, you know, like, the injury timeout, like, yo, are you okay? Like, he hit the f- – boom. He caught it and hit the floor, and it was, a, it was like an and one. It was a legal That's play. Crazy, yo. It was one of the. It's. I mean. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, he was right. It's right. arguably the worst, the best duck I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, for sure. It definitely, it's up there. It's kind of like that Jadavion Clowney hit in college. You don't like. <laughs> I never forget it, bro. It's like <laughs> we was talking about it a couple weeks ago. It's like one of those things you just never forget. Bro. You never forget it, bro. <laughs> you literally, you never. You literally, you never. But it was. It was that was that that was like. That was it, it, bro. That was it, it. You, you said what else, Cody? Oh, Matt Barnes. Give me uh, Matt Barnes' story. People don't know Matt Barnes was a free agent. Him too, bro. And he was – Matt was on his way out the league that year. And somebody told Matt on a whim to come down and play pickup ball with us. And he was a free agent. And Matt was, like, playing good in pickup ball. But, like, Matt – that's not my brother right there. He was doing everything right. And we had Karan Butler at the time. Mm-hmm. And Matt told – we were telling Matt to hoop. And then we went to the front office like, hey, like – because Matt was injured with the Lakers. His hamstring was hurt, so he never really got to play. We're like, nah, he's good. Like, he needs to play with us. But me and Matt met so well when we played because we don't, we don't care about nothing. <laughs> like, we're at your head. That's like, right. there's no fear. There's no moment too big. Like, if it's a big shot, Matt is going to take a big shot and not care about it. For real. So, like, we were just scrapping, fighting. For, like, we were running so fast or playing so hard. Like, like nobody could say nothing to us. So, like, Matt was like, he was just a big key because, well, I mean, I know how y'all feel. Like, if I'm going to war, homie, and I know someone got my back, I'm not going to war by myself. We both been here scrapping. We uh. Physically scrapping sometimes, yeah. basketball scrapping, whatever you want to say. And I know you're going to be there. I'll rock with you for life. For life, bro. So yeah. that's why – that's who Matt is for me. So, like, when I got tangled up with the Goran Dragic thing, and that's some nonsense, but it ended up being his – like, the Suns bench kind of got into it and came over. And next thing you know, I look around, Matt's right there with me. You know what I'm saying? So anytime oh, okay. there was any type of something – the rest of the team be over there. That dude be over there. I'm like, I'm off y'all. I'm not going to say no names, but I'm off y'all. Like, I'm, I, I know the proper place to put you in. But I know when I have my back, like he, this dude not going to let me get, you know what I'm saying, bombed in the back of the head or whatever. Like, he has my back on the court and off. Sure. So, like, Matt is a brother for that. That is never going to change. Like, like when this son, like, everybody not built the same. But I know you built, you like, like, you got a battery in your back. Like, you don't care about looking cool, all that. Like, now we can rock. Sure. Now we can rock. 
No doubt. Definitely. So, Ryan, talk a little bit about, you know, let's stay on the Clippers. How was playing, how was CP3 as a leader? Talk a little bit about Chris Paul. Here's the thing with Chris. Chris is a perfectionist. Chris wants to get everything right. And Chris is arguably one of the most competitive people I've ever known in my life. But when you're such a perfectionist, sometimes you don't like to trust. You don't like to give. And I don't think a couple of our guys were on the level where he was, coaching-wise, X and O's, X's and O's, all that. So Chris Paul, when he was backed into a corner, he feels like the team needed something. He was going to go out and get it for himself. So I just think where Chris was in his career, the rest of our team wasn't there. Blake was talented. DJ was up and coming. Karan Butler was a little older. But we never – we never really all hit at the same stride. But Chris is one of the more competitive guys I've ever seen. Like, you don't realize he's only about six feet tall, six yeah. feet, six one, but he's just, he's so, everything is so personal with him. Nice. Yeah, he's like a. It's personal. Like, if he hears something about himself or he, you know, has a bad series or he misses a shot, it was personal. But he's one of the more skilled guards I had literally ever seen in my life and like he just makes stuff happen i just some people you can't explain mm-hmm. i just make stuff happen you're like well he's only this this or this but like like will maybe like you said jj let's say it's a dude who's just oh he's just a bull rusher but somehow he keep getting to the quarterback <laughs> he don't even have footwork yeah. like <laughs> like buddy don't have no footwork at all yeah. but he just makes stuff you can't explain he just makes it and i'm not saying that chris doesn't have skill so Chris is the, the guy, he's always going to find a way. He's going to mm-hmm. find a way. And that, I just hate that he, he got hurt when they were up 3-2 because I believe they would have won the finals that year. You just, you know, you yeah, I think there's a strong chance, man, because what he brings to the table is always, it's always big, you know. And I, I mean, mm-hmm. we can if all day, but it's yeah. a big factor, you know. No doubt. So, all right, Ryan. After uh, playing, and I know you spent a little time overseas, you, you played a little bit. You've been playing in the big three. Can you kind of talk to us about, you know, Ice Cube's league and, and how that is? Man, first year I came in, I was out of shape. Thought it was just going to be like pick up ball. Second year I got found out the tempo. Will, you can go to whole like football. You can literally – it's so physical because they don't want to call them fouls. A word. <laughs> it's a grown – imagine a bunch of grown men – who don't want to get shown up. <laughs> so slowly but surely, the game starts getting more and more physical to the point where, like, you're turning to go to the hole, but you're getting full-on chucked by Reggie Evans. <laughs> you're not even moving for a rebound. You guys are just – you locking up like this. <laughs> you locking up like this. No foul. No foul. And, like – when you play pickup ball, that's kind of the rules of pickup ball. But even in pickup ball, we don't go at each other like that, that. <laughs> so it was war, bro. That's crazy. Big three is war. <laughs> it's literally war. <laughs> and it's a different type of beat, and it's a different type of game. That's crazy, though. For real. Because a lot of people think, oh, no, it's just, uh, <coughs> you know, it's not that good. A friend of mine – or it's not going to be that – they didn't think it'd be that serious. Well, a friend of mine, we actually went to when they came to Charlotte, and we sat pretty low. Dude, cats were out there going at it. Like, My bad, going, that's not a cough. That's the, these hot Cheetos, dog. <laughs> <laughs> these hot Cheetos. You, you said you, you were down there on the floor? Yeah, like we were, we were a few rows up, man, but cats were down there going at it. Like Steven Jackson, like, yo, it was – people were out there talking trash. <laughs> You know, like when you playing on the streets, ain't no hand checking. So you go to the hole, you gotta put your shoulder into somebody. <laughs> like, bro, or like, you know, all right, well, anybody who played basketball, this is a, the eternal basketball argument. If I go to the hole the one time, you foul me and the ref doesn't call it. I'm saying, hey, ref, call the foul. He grabbed me. Go to the hole again, ref doesn't call it again. You say, okay, I'm gonna adjust. Now you go to the hole with a little more umph, with a little more force. Ref doesn't call it again. So now, now the level the level keeps rising and rising and rising to where you're full on wrestling or just elbows. Like, and it's a little more because nobody wants to get shown up. 
Yeah, no, so you're going a little more, a little more, a little more, and it's it's crazy. It's, it's, it's like a, it's like it's egos, bro. You know, like all y'all not playing in the league no more. This is probably like the most serious basketball y'all get now. But a lot of y'all didn't play in the league, so you like you ain't about to have none of that. Like <laughs> guys are competitive, bro. Guys are very competitive, very competitive for still. For real, for real, bro. It's like with, like in Burlington, we always got that one guy, like or them few guys that's always out there on the court. And like they just literally just foul you to death. Like they ain't hit one bucket. They ain't did nothing. But they about thirty eight years old, and all they do is foul you and talk about how they used to be the best for coming to high school. Right. <laughs> but guys are gonna compete. Nobody wants to get shown Nobody up. Never. Up. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> That's mad funny. So Ryan, what would uh, we ask everybody on our podcast this too? What would be that one thing like? You dropped a bag on like what was a big purchase you made when you got the NBA and you look and you were like, ah, maybe my pockets were hurting a little bit after making that purchase. You know it's crazy, bro. When I first got to the league, I was so simple that first things that I got, all I bought was like I didn't need to buy Jordans because I had a Nike account, but I would buy video games. So you yeah, know I would get the video man. games. I go like this is before Madden. You know all you need is Madden and 2K now and Call of Duty like. When you kind of you little buy video games, so that was kind of like my deal getting. But my parents had this big old house, and my dad, my dad is old school, so my dad would, he's no longer here today, but my dad, what he would do is he thought he was going to fix the house himself. So he kept putting off these projects. So I spent like $80,000 getting the house worked on, getting the house done. But I dropped the money on my parents' house getting done and started remodeling and, and changing that. You know, that was my big thing was to to get back. That was some of the biggest purchases I got. Because even cars, I would get rented cars. I, I drove my same 2002 Tahoe, you know, in the league for as long as I could, you know. So sure. nothing really, you know, I didn't really have the big purchases at that time. Like, it wasn't a, a Lambo or nothing like that. Like, I just always had in my mindset, like, I don't need that. I'm not, I won't even look at my money, if that makes sense, you know. So that was that was my deal. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we didn't have people come on and say this, like, they really ain't had no crazy go out of the way, like, mm-hmm. purchase, but we consider an investment the same thing, you know, so mm-hmm. that's, dope. that's dope. I feel like I want to get back to my parents. I feel like my dad worked hard enough, you know, I surprised him with the floor. I got, it started, I got the floors done. Then oh. after I got the floors done, I got the stairs done. I started getting stuff done because, you know, I grew up in a house that was never finished. So imagine that irking you like your parents' house ain't never finished. So I want to help finish it for them, you know? For sure, for sure. For sure. Yeah, that makes sense, bro. So, yeah, I know one of the last things I want to hear you talk about, um, Ryan, was just your uh, transition just from the, uh, the NBA over to playing overseas, bro, and just talk about your time playing overseas and how um, that led to you ultimately becoming an analysis for ESPN, bro. When I went overseas, you know, my mindset was to go over there and dominate, but – what people don't understand is every league is different. So when you play in a Spanish league, they don't want any player to be bigger than the coach. So you have to adjust in a sense to where you could hit 10 straight buckets and coach is going to pull you out of the six-minute mark no matter what, no matter what. And their mindset is that if you do a coach ass, you're going to be good. But if you don't, you're the reason we lose. So I had a conflict because to a great degree, I would do my thing. But they always felt like – they felt like you can't be bigger than the coach. So, you know, I would go over there, get six, seven, eight lob dunks in a row or something, and then next thing you know, they'll try to have you inactive. But that's, the, like, the mindset in Spain. Okay. You know, they're trying to develop their talent like that. But I will say the one thing is they're more of a – it's a detail-oriented game. And, like, all right, like, I'll give you this. So in America – Let's say I only drive to my right hand, right? If I only drive to my right hand, I'm only going to be asked to do certain things. But when you get overseas, bro, you got a dude who's six inches shorter than you, half of your strength, and he's going to force you to your left hand. And if you don't go to your left hand to score, he's going to eat you alive, or you're going to kind of look bad. So it forces you to work on your weaknesses because those dudes will literally overshadow you. So when I was diving to the rim or I was getting certain plays, they got to the point they put five people in the paint to stop me. So they're not going to say one-on-one. They're not going to catch your fade one-on-one. They're going to put five, and they're going to dare people to get shots. 
So I think I